Good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm calling this meeting to order for March the 28th, 2023. Result of the amended agenda for March the 28th, 2023. Special meeting of council be adopted. Moved by <clears throat> Councilor White. Seconded by Councilor Powell. Discussion. And just uh, for everyone to know uh, what we've added to the agenda was an open council forum on the arena. Um, I'll get into more of that in just a minute. Any discussion? All in favor? Lance, can you carry? diver up a little bit? Yeah, or if you want to move a little bit closer too, but I'll try to speak up a little bit more. Yeah. 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 So just before we move on, uh, and let me know if you can't hear me, Gord, but uh, just before we move on, just so everybody knows that this is a, similar to a regular meeting of council, this is not a public hearing. Um, there have been no requests for anyone to speak before council prior to this meeting. Uh, so council will be uh, discussing items on the retrofit of the arena. There's possibility of two resolutions that are on, or I shouldn't say possible, there's two resolutions right now that are sitting on the agenda as we speak. So uh, under general business in 3.1, we have the open council forum. Um, this is uh, intended uh, to really give uh, the audience a chance to hear what council has been talking about uh, for the past months, a year, uh, about the possibility of the retrofit uh, of the arena or any options otherwise. Um, I do know that uh, I think uh, Chair for Recreation will uh, maybe open it up if she would like, if she's not ready yet. Uh, but I do uh, welcome any members of council to speak. Okay, so I... Yeah, we just... You can start with if you want to talk about the retrofit. Okay, and, so uh, to, to clarify and to give the public more information on what we've been having to kind of think about and discuss, um, the slab and boards, the number that came in um, from the tender process is $3.2 million. There were multiple bids for that. Um, the HVAC and electrical came in at $2.2 million, which also had multiple bids. The roof and exterior cladding is at $2.6 million. There was only one bid for that process and it came out of Brandon. And then there's miscellaneous grading um, around the exterior of the arena that was discussed in order to, um, I guess, assist with the drainage and stuff and issues uh, from the exterior. That's at approximately $600,000. There was also multiple, or actually no, there wasn't any bids on that because they couldn't see the ground. Um, right. So we're assuming that one town could possibly do this as an idea and or we get quotes once the from the local. Yeah, from the local. Uh, then there also is the uh, bill to JCI for all the work that they've done with regard to the retrofit. So that total there of those numbers that I just gave you for the retrofit is $8.6 million. Oh, okay. $8.6 million for the retrofit. Now we can piecemeal that out is one of the things we've talked about. Can we just do some of it and give the arena by that way, then pursue the new build is one of the options um, that we've discussed. Um, the other option is we do nothing and we leave the arena how it is. We pursue the new build and we cross our fingers and hope that everything is okay with the ice as it stands and we keep doing what we've been doing for the last little bit. Um, I believe that the sand base went in in 2018 and it had a lifespan of three to five years, was that correct? Mm. The temporary floor? Yeah. yeah, something like that. So we're, or is that not around? So that's kind of the options that we've been uh, going back and forth with. Um, okay. Any discussion or? Uh, no, we'll just uh, have the discussion at the table, but um, just uh, further to that, um, uh, Councillor Boychuk had mentioned about the project and, and how we can 
you know, break it down into sections as well. So council's been contemplating all that. Uh, the, uh, the grant that we did receive from the province was $3.1 million. Uh, we could, if we wanted to, say just do the ice surface, which is, I think you said, $2.2 million. And so that would cost us $1.1 million. Slab over 3.2. What's that? 3.2. Sorry, 3.2. So then half of that would be covered by the province and then uh, half would be uh, by ourselves. But also one other important thing is that we did have a borrowing bylaw that we did have back in January, which approved for 7... 2.7. No, no, I mean the total project mm -hmm. was... 7.5. Uh, 7.5. So it is over, so that means that the project, according to the uh, tender documents that we received, would have to be scaled down no matter what in order for us to proceed because of the uh, the borrowing bylaw that we have in place right now. So anyway, I'll open up for any other discussion with council before we can proceed. Go ahead, Councilor Bob. So on the retrofit, when you say reskin the outside, has there been any insulation added to that cost? Does that involve insulation? Uh, I would I would have to confirm with JCI, but uh, I don't believe they're replacing any insulation. Okay. On the floor or lower, I thought there was talk that the boards were sufficient in there right now that we didn't need to replace them. The tender, the 3.2 includes new boards and glass. If we decide to use our old ones, that would be a savings. Okay, so that approximately $400,000. Okay. Sure. Okay. okay. So I guess doing some figuring here. So to just replace the floor is 3.2 and with the availability of the grant. So that means the town only is good for 1.6. Is that how it works? That's right. <clears throat> what happens with the grants that are in place right now if more time is needed? So if we if we use as an example your your question to do with the ice surface if we did the 3.2 uh, 1.6 we would use up as the grant the rest of the 3.1 would go back to the province. I guess my question is if it was more time needed would that affect the availability of the grants? Would we lose those grants if we didn't do this? Uh, you would not lose the grants. Okay. If, the, if, cou if council uh, does turn down project as far as the retrofit and the um, uh, the document as far as the tender document goes uh, then that would mean that the borrowing bylaw would be over and also the uh, grant to the province would be turned back to the province thank you go ahead so if I understand one of the many options is we do nothing we don't do the retrofit period and we hope the ice which is working at the moment today, and uh, Coach Wolf told us last week that he's happy with the safety perspective. And then if the community wanted to go forward and fundraise the, depending on who you talk to, the eight to nine to 10 million to build a new arena, that could happen because they can't, I suspect they will move forward till they hear what our decision is. Thank you. Yeah, as you know, as in councillors and stuff like that, I think that the fact that we haven't pursued the building a new builder, we have the numbers for that. Um, all we have is a retrofit numbers right now. So I, I just think that the, we need to know what those other numbers are before we can, or before. Before, before we see, okay, before proceeding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so just so that the public knows also um, that if, if, we, if we chose to um, say, proceed with letting uh, a, a community uh, group move towards providing information of a new arena to the for, to council, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean a green light for a, a new arena. There would have to be a process that we'd have to go through with that, but also um, and, and other grants and all and so forth that we would have to apply for. Um, but it would mean that um, we would turn down the, um, uh, the retrofit and uh, we would uh, still own that retrofit documents. So that means that if things didn't go right, 
uh, in a year's time, if that would, you know, that's the, the word that we hear, then uh, the retrofit can still be done, or we can apply for grants for, to do, redo the ice surface in 2024. We'll always, the point is that we'll always own the documents from uh, Johnson Controls. And then you mentioned the granting thing too. So the other thing is, we, I don't know if we necessarily want to hold on to those funds while we pursue that. Because if we are going to apply for anything uh, with regard to a new build, then that obviously is probably going to hinder that process for there as yes. well. The, the grant monies that we have received are uh, or, uh, applied upon based on a retrofit, not a new build. So no matter what, if we ended up going with a new build, we could not use the grant money that we have uh, given to us kind of right now uh, towards a new build, it's only for a retrofit. Go ahead. So am I under the impression that right now we have uh, 6 million point four that the town is committed to? As in, we've got 3.2 for a grant, and we get 50 50 match, and then there's another grant, roughly $7 million. The town of Swan River said that they would do. We did the borrowing bylaw, we did the tenders, and we said we'd spend that. No, the number uh, for the borrowing is 2.7. Yes. But in total. So 3.162 plus 2.7, we're at 5.862. The, the, exact, the exact amount applied for was... 7.5, I think, or something. Well, that, that was the total project cost, but the exact amount asked for by the province was 6.28, whatever it was. The, the province gave us 100% of what was asked for, our application down to the penny. So I guess that's credit to our, our MLA. But, uh, uh, one hundred percent of what was asked for in the grant application was given to the town. Uh, so, uh, go ahead, then I'll go Councilor Moria. So I guess my question still is, has the town committed six point two million dollars to either retrofit or to a new arena? So if you're gonna have a group of people going out there, what are they starting with? Mm -hmm. uh, with a new arena? Well you got, has the town committed six point two million dollars? Point seven. Point seven. Yeah. We borrow. We to a retrofit. To a retrofit. Yes. Deputy mm Mayor -hmm. uh, Morio. Uh, yeah. So, like as we all know, this is a, a very difficult uh, decision that we have to make, and there's uh, even around the council table and the community, um, we have a wide range of opposing views and suggestions and expertise out there. Um, so no matter what decision we make tonight, there's going to be unhappy people. Um, but the fact is, is that we need safe, reliable ice, and we need it as soon as we can. We know that the ice surface is still heaving, or pardon me, the ice surface, the ice slab is still heaving underneath that ice. Um, our workers tell us that all the time. Um, they're keeping the cracks and that under control to provide the ice surface, but we know that that slab is currently moving. Um, so with the new arena, it is nice, but currently we need to have a safe, reliable ice surface. So I'm not opposed to a committee uh, to pursue the new arena um, and use and other partners in the future, but we need to look at that ice surface in the immediate. Um, so in the meantime, I propose and um, it's my recommendation or and believes that we replace that ice slab uh, to provide that safe, reliable ice surface uh, and make a good ice on it in the short term, but also uh, allow a committee or a group of people to uh, secure partners, source uh, numbers and additional fundings where a complete new arena could be looked at down the road. But uh, to be realistic with the competing challenges that the town has right now, um, financially with crime prevention, other infrastructure, uh, keeping our tax rates appropriately, um, even the complete retrofit is, to me, is a pie in the sky. Like uh, We should just deal with what we know is going, uh, limp that arena along, to see where potentially... Um, there are some partners out there or additional grants that we can get. And should that fail, 
Um, we can definitely, as uh, his worship mentioned, the documents with uh, Johnson Controls are ours, so we can continue on with those retrofit um, changes with the HVAC and the roof and that at later dates as funds become available. So that's my thoughts. Okay, thank you. Anything further? Go ahead. The, the rink has been limping along for, since when? Since 2018? 2018, we, have, we put this into place. Um, so, so you're saying, so we're saying, or it's being said that we should do something immediately. We're saying that the ice, we've, we've talked to the coach, we've talked to, and not to say that we, but we don't know. We do not know what's under that ice surface. We do not know. It's been this many years that we've limped by. Um, if we could, if we're able to limp by for a couple more years, it's a chance we take. It's a chance we take that if something goes wrong right, right away. But if we're able to limp it along for a few more years until we're able to actually put together a committee to, to you know, put these funds together and hopefully build and not spend that much money on a retrofit. Anything further? Uh, Councillor Medford. What happens if we, to the grant money, if we put this retrofit on hold while we pursue the numbers for a new build, what impact does that have with regards to seeking grants for a new build while we're still holding on to money and holding on to the retrofit the, the, possibility? So the timeline right now is to decide whether or not we're going to engage with Johnston Controls to do any, any part of the retrofit this year. Uh, and that uh, the grant that we have right now is tied to that. So if we don't proceed with it, then we could lose the grant. And, but we can always apply for a new grant next year if we wanted to proceed with uh, the retrofit of any kind next year. And how does that impact us for, like does that give the town a, I guess a bad name, bad energy, if we're basically being given a grant and then kicking it right back to them saying, yeah, no, we don't want it, we're gonna, does that kind of tarnish us for potential future grants in the like very near future, or does that not really play an impact? I, I, could, I don't know if any of us can really answer that question. It depends, I guess, on the government of the day. Go ahead. I would hope any government would be pleased that we're being prudent and how we spend our money and we're not sure so why take money from government if we don't know how to spend it and, and respect that and uh, act accordingly. Okay. Anything further? Go ahead. I don't believe it would leave us in, in a great standing um, with that. Um, the other thing we talked about was safety. Like we said, we had Coach Wolf here and <coughs> he didn't have any concerns at the time. He said what the rink and arena staff have been doing to date, he is fine with. I don't believe there's been any safety concerns raised by the Swan River Minor Hockey Program. So those are our two largest users as far as that goes. Um, and like I said, we have been doing this for this many years. Um, to do it for one more year, we could basically have this community group provided with the time to look into what the new build potentially is going to run and should the ice continue to act the way it has been or it gets worse or better or whatever the case may be, we can still pursue this next year, write another grant if that's what we do, or the community group might shock you and be in a good position to proceed the other way. Um, I don't think 3.2 million in a, in a cement base is giving it along. That's a, that's a very large investment on an asset that potentially is not going to be here that long, in my personal opinion. Um, and then when we were speaking with JCI previously, when we brought up just doing the concrete base, um, it was brought up that, well, if you do that, you kind of have to do the HVAC system and continue with that ambient temperature. That was an issue there, which kind of raised some questions for me as far as that goes. So if you're gonna do those two, you're at, I believe it was 6.6 .6 million, but you're not gonna do the roof that protects everything underneath that 6.6 .6 million. So 
it's it's we've said it here it's it's a rock and a hard place and there's no easy decision we have our ice plant that is very old i believe the condensers were done in 2005 for fifty thousand dollars so we run the risk at that if we do nothing there there's a lot of things here that are at play and and um even if we do do the cement slab that's not saying that our ice plant is gonna be able to make it through that either uh, new condensers for it uh, and speaking with uh, Mr. Ricks was I think he guesstimated it to be about $100,000 if that should go right um, so there's, there's many things at play here many many um, the other things that we bounced around minor hockey um, I've seen some comments today people are saying oh six or seven months well they probably don't have participants in the sport because minor hockey starts in September the arena in Minnetonis cannot or will not put ice in until November. Their ice plant is, I believe, on its way out. I think LP brought that in over almost three decades ago. Um, so, Minnetonis could be, if something happened mid-season, yeah, Minnetonis is there for our minor hockey. We don't have to worry about that. Like, we have a place for them. Um, the Stampeders, that's the that's the different case. If something were to happen, where would they go? Um, it's been kind of delved into by um, their group and it didn't seem like the MJHL was uh, okay to having them play in Minnetonis. Right, am I saying here? Okay. So they looked into dressing rooms. They said the dressing rooms were too small and there's an issue of them coming down the one side. Well, we're okay, well we could put in aqua trailers on the other side and keep them there. That wasn't good enough. So, there's issues like I know people are saying, well, just put it into Minnetonis. Well, are you going to put a couple million into Minnetonis, or are we going to put a couple of taxpaying dollars from Swan River into the Swan River Arena? <coughs> are going to do that? Like it's there's no, I don't think, an easy answer. At all. Uh, if we choose to do nothing, we're rolling the dice, and if it works, you're going to love it. If that ice gives out, you're going to want to hang us. So if we put in that amount and and that doesn't work because there's no guarantees that that's even going to work if we don't keep that HVAC system or our ice plant. Like there's so many contingent things here, it's not even funny. So in my mind, the only for sure way is to pursue or even look at the new build. We had the Minidosa facts come in or numbers come in at 7.2, but then did you guys get something different from the mayor? It would, no, we, they won't respond. I spoke with the mayor today. And the mayor's telling you something different than uh, the, the government project, article. The project is coming in roughly about nine million dollars. So even at that, it's a nine million dollar new arena versus a potential eight point six million retrofit to an old arena. So you have your old arena that will maybe get another 20, 20 years out of it for that same amount. Our taxes are going to be the same, right? We're we're not doing anything different. Two point seven. That's what we're investing, right? So you're going to have an old arena that's not gonna have the longevity, or do you do that 2.7, potentially have this group secure the funding for the difference in grants, and have a new arena that we don't have to worry about for the next 65 years. That's kind of where I'm at. That's my, that's my thought process. Just, just for information, it's, it's more than 2.7. We had 750 coming from our uh, oh. community building fund, or oh, reserve, right. sorry. Yeah, so we have a little bit. So I mean, if that community group said, okay, Town of Swan River, if you were willing to do three or whatever the amount is for that, are you willing to do that for the new? And then we can say, okay, here we go with that. We're not gonna ask for any more from you. We're gonna try and get there on our own. At the end of the day, the taxes stay the same for the people. And instead of having a retrofitted old building, you have a brand new arena, hopefully. Hopefully. Okay, go ahead. From a fiscal perspective, I'm concerned about the prospect of doing any portion of a retrofit if the public and community is wanting to pursue a new build because we have zero dollars for anything. So if we're borrowing, what was it just said, 1.1 million to do the ice slab, that's 1.1 million we're still going to be paying on while we're potentially borrowing for a new arena, which is likely going to impact the taxpayers because I'm not happy or comfortable with where our debt is currently. We have some major must-need projects that need to be done and coming down the pipe. The lagoon is one of them. Um, 
and we're going to need to borrow for that too. So where do we draw the line to be fiscally responsible? So I don't know that we have the money to borrow for a retrofit if we're talking about turning around and in five years or less borrowing to put up a new arena. It's kind of got to be one or the other is what I'm kind of thinking. I don't think we have the dollars to be borrowing for a retrofit and then turning around and borrowing again before the retrofit's even paid off to proceed with a new build. Any further discussion? Okay, so then we'll move on to item four and four point one. Would you take a question, a couple of questions? This isn't a debate. I'm, I'm not going to debate. I just want to put some. Uh, if I open it up for questions, then I have to open up for everybody. Sorry. So sure. um, we did have a time when we were allowing for um, uh, delegations, but nobody applied for any other delegations up until we began. So it wouldn't be fair to anybody else. Your call. Okay, so then up to 4.1. <clears throat> Whereas the Centennial Arena is a central gathering point for people of all ages to play, watch, and learn various ice based recreation activities like hockey, public skating, figure skating, etc. <clears throat> and is, is also home to the MJHL team, minor hockey teams, and all age groups. High school hockey and hockey training camps or clinics, all hosting numerous games and tournaments, providing endless entertainment to Valley residents. And whereas the rink slab suffered an ice floor uh, failure in 2018-19, season prompted the installation of a temporary ice floor. The temporary floor is reaching its predicted life end period and the rink slab continues to shift, causing the ice surface to crack, uh, risking immediate shutdown of the ice surface due to safety issues. Therefore, be it resolved that the Town of Swanover, upon approval for the Manitoba Municipal Board regarding borrowing bylaw 1 2023, enter a construction contract with Johnson Controls Incorporated to proceed with the only the floor slab replacement portion of the arena retrofit. Be it further resolved, the Town of Swan River enter into a value engineering process with Johnson Control Incorporated to determine additional, if any, scope items for the remainder of the tendered items that shall be included in the renovation project. Moved by Councillor Midwood, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion. I'd like a recorded vote when we get to it. Okay. The, total, the total cost of that? Uh, total cost of the um, uh, slab was? You have your numbers there. 3.2 million. Okay, thank you. 3.2 million. So that would mean that the town of Swanover would pay for half of that. Discussion? All in favor? Yeah. All in no. favor? I got my hand up. Okay. So all in favor? No, nope, got discussion. Oh, you had your hand up. Sorry, Deputy Mayor. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, just to, like, we got the $3.1 million from the province. Um, we asked for municipal board borrowing up to two point seven, but what we have with the old Canada Building um, Fund or the Gas Act Fund, um, the borrowing that we would borrow is if we continue to use the proposed dollars that we have of the, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, CEO pools around, was it 700,000 we're going to kick in from that reserve fund? 750. <clears throat> yeah, so, so, so that would leave us probably around a half a million dollars to borrow uh, to put into this arena where, yes, I agree, um, if a new arena is built down the road, um, it may seem the waste, but that money won't go to the waste. That building can be repurposed for other purposes and uses for within the town. Um, so, yeah, so it, to me, it's not wasted money putting that in there. We're, we're dealing with potentially the root cause of all the issues there. Um, and it gives us time. We get that safety reliability in there for the ice so that things don't uh, go away one night in the middle of a tournament or 
a game for that matter. So it's to me, it's not wasted money. We can always repurpose if uh, the committee finds extra funds for a new arena. It's great. So it's to me, it's not wasted funds, but we need to provide the safe, reliable ice. Okay. Go ahead. And then I guess just the discussion. So you're saying five hundred thousand, but then we also have the bill for JCI two, which is. We have the community sustainable grant that can cover that, more portions of it. And then, what was the other thing I was gonna say? 750, 300, no, I think that was it. I just wanted to make sure, oh, then the other thing I was gonna to mention too is that we still are paying towards the last retro or, or thing. We still have another year's worth of payments on the uh, sand base. That's right. Which was 400,000, I believe, was the total. Mm -hmm. That's all I wanted to say. Okay. Further discussion? Councilor mm -hmm. Bob. So, if this motion is passed, what would be the time frame of this starting? Uh, this allows us to sign the contract tomorrow, if need be, and the geotechnical will be booked. But I mean, when would the construction start date start? Because do we have a date? Uh, since the stampede is in the playoffs, it would be after that date. So I guess my question to that is, if that they go further in the playoffs, that makes it further in the year. So does that not affect the start date of next year? Uh, well, we we can't start until we receive provincial approval on the borrowing bylaw, uh, and that the arena must be available for construction. So the, the, act, the date that we've been given so far is approximately the beginning of May. So if they go in deep into the playoffs, we will have a decision to make based on a construction schedule. Uh, completion date of how many months? Uh, they are estimated to be done by November 15th. With, with the start of geo on May, is that Correct. That's uh, considering that the municipal board gives us approval on the bylaw. That's correct. So you have a couple of things here that we really don't know if it's even going to go yet anyway. Right? Mm -hmm. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Further discussion? Go ahead. Um, just uh, with regard to that geotechnical lake, we're going to be digging anyhow. Do we need to spend the money on the geotechnical? We're digging if we're digging the frost out. We're digging the frost out, right? Do we need to spend that? Uh, yes, I, I I believe we do. I think we need to know where it's at, what's mm -hmm. what's there. Is it what type of material? It'll tell us more than just frost. Okay. Time for um, so do I understand that if we proceed with this resolution and it passes that we are basically going to go ahead with signing a contract to commence work without even having a borrowing bylaw approved or in place? It's, our borrowing has been approved by council, but the municipal board has to approve it. So before we spend any money, the municipal board has to approve it first. Okay, so we don't have that approval. but. If this resolution passes, we're essentially talking about signing a contract with we, JCI. It is conditional in the yes. resolution. The resolution yeah. states that it's conditional. If the resolution doesn't count unless the boring bylaw is approved. We can't spend <clears throat> any money until the municipal board approves it. Okay. Go ahead. And then the other thing, what we don't have any confirmation on <clears throat> is once we start digging under there to remove that is we have good bones right now, but will our bones still be good after we start digging down six, eight, ten feet? What's going to happen? And what other issues are you going to find? That's that's the other thing is the unknown. So, anybody want to make that decision out there? No. <laughs> Just okay. Further discussion. All right. So I'll ask the question. All in favor? Opposed? Then it's defeated. Okay, so then moving on to 4.2. Whereas the Centennial Arena is a central gathering point for people of all ages to play, watch, and learn various ice-based recreation activities, 
It is a home to the Swan Valley Stampeder Junior Hockey uh, Team, Swan Valley Stampeder Minor, Minor Hockey Program, Swan Valley Regional Secondary School, Tiger Arma High School Hockey Team, Parkland Rangers AAA Under 15 and Under 18 teams, all of which provide endless entertainment to Valley residents. Therefore, be it resolved, the town of Swan River reorganize and support the local community group to proceed with the securing partners, fundraising, and developing a plan for a new arena. Discussion. Councillor Bobbitt. So I guess I go back to what is the Town of Swan River committing to by this resolution? <coughs> We're not committing to anything right now. So this group of people is going to go out there raising funds saying they have <clears throat> zero money to start with. I, I, you can almost say that we've already committed. I, this is the That's speed, right. you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. We've already kind of committed saying, well, we would do this to a retrofit. Why wouldn't we do that to a new bill, right? That's what I'm getting. So in my mind, but the thing is, the process with this, we would have to hear what um, the community group has come together and formalized as far as a plan, the wish list, and so forth. This is not going to happen over uh, overnight. This is a long process, but we would have to hear from them, and and then of course then we would have to go through the same process as far as borrowing, uh, hearings, town hall uh, conversations. This is really just beginning the next the, uh, another step in this whole saga that we've been dealing with for the, for the last little while. So there's, there's no monies right now as we speak. If, if we go with this, there is no commitment to, to the project as we speak. At least, at least in my mind, it, there isn't. Go ahead. Just to wrap my head around this, the town of Swan River was going to borrow $2.7 million, correct? Three point, well, borrow, yes, 2.7. Yeah, <laughs> so we're talking with Mr. Ganita, and he can correct me if I'm wrong. For every $100,000 of assessment, that would cost you fifty-one dollars and seventy-one cents a year. Mr. Ganita, do you have that number in front of you? So what I'm getting at is, if your property is assessed at one hundred thousand dollars, you pay fifty-one dollars and seventy-one cents per year. What I'm also calculating that backwards for every million dollars, it's roughly twenty dollars per hundred thousand that would cost us every rate payer. So if your house is at 300000 it would be three times that much. So just to give people a perspective of what this is going to cost. But, but I, I, at the same time, we're just really, we're talking about engaging a, a community group right now. We're not talking about spending money at all. So we don't want to get too far ahead about what we're spending and what we're committing. That time will come at some point in time. I understand what you're saying, but at the same time, I think the, the People need to know that the Thomas Warner is roughly, I guess you'd say, has made a commitment already by doing the retrofit and moving forward with either one mm -hmm. right now. Fair so enough. this is the cost that, that is bearing. So for every million dollars that goes over that, twenty dollars more adds to your taxes every year for every hundred thousand dollars of assessment you have. So that's okay. something mm -hmm. that the community can keep in mind. Okay, thank you. Further discussion? Yeah. Oh, sorry, Deputy Mayor Morio. Yeah, as I understand it, uh, we just killed the retro, so basically any commitment that we put and any grant that received is now dead. So as going forward with this committee, um, there's a, it, to me, it basically it's starting with at zero dollars. Um, and then based on the argument and counsel of the day of when that decision comes, they we could, if it's us, we could choose, yeah, we did, commit 700,000 from the old gas tax reserve and borrow 2.7, but that's, it's meaningless at this point and it's meaningless to the resolution. Uh, the resolution is to go towards the committee and then that decision based on what that committee finds and what numbers is, is the, will be a decision for council at the day uh, to decide how much they want to commit from reserves and how much they want to commit from borrowing or kick it back to say, uh, the project's not proceeding until 100% of the funds is raised. Uh, it reminds me back um, back to the, the pool days where you don't have enough money, but the project starts. I don't want to see that return. So but back to the issue, it's, the, the resolution says 
to start a committee and look at options. So that's where we need to be. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? Go ahead. I do think it's fair that uh, what Councillor Bobbick has brought up, it definitely gives me perspective, more perspective than I had before on that borrowing. Um, I hope it gives everybody else some perspective. Um, I don't think it's fair to compare the pool process to this. Obviously, we've learned from that, and hopefully we'll never go down that path again. Um, but I do think it's fair that the Town of Swan River is going to provide some support. And if we were going to do 2.7 plus 750 for a retro, I think we could, at the very least, say that that was something we would be willing to support for a new build. I, at least that's how I would feel about it. Um, I, I don't think you can say, yeah. I mean, not many people can go out there and just have it gifted to the community. I mean, the concession worked out well. We have that cost, I think, just the water hookup for the yeah. town. So, and, and it might happen again that way too. You never know what the community group is going to do. Okay, thank you. Uh, further discussion? All right. I'll call the question. All in favor? It's carried. And that, that's the end of it. The result of the special media council may now adjourned at 6.41 p.m. Moved by Councilor Medwood, second by Councilor Powell. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. We're adjourned. Thank you everybody for coming out tonight.